I actually wanted to just quickly give a quick little roundup a review of a night out that I had the other day where I went to Printworks here in London. And Printworks, if you don't know, is essentially a client club that we have here, basically our version of like a mega club, because I'm sure the capacity is way over 2000 or something. And it's basically um, a nightclub that's been, um, that's inside of a former print factory, hence the name Printworks. And if I'm not mistaken, it's just me going off memory and not Googling anything. If I'm not mistaken, the whole premise around Printworks when it first opened was that it was, I think the first sort of nightclub that opened just before the night tube or something like that. Um, Because, uh, you know, at the UK, in the UK, for whatever reason, in London, we never had 24 hour tubes or even tubes that run, you know, a delayed service after 12. So you're basically effed if you went out in places and you couldn't get a train back, you have to get a cab back or get a bus back, which is super sketchy. So if I'm not mistaken, when Primax first opened, the premise behind it was that, hey, we've got this nightclub. It's going to be in a former print factory. We're going to completely blacken it out. So it looks like you're in a dark, dark nightclub with no windows. And we're going to have it open from... 12 p.m to 12 a no 12 p.m yeah to 11 p.m so it'll be like open throughout the day throughout the evening and then just before 12 when all the or just before 11 or 12 before all the flipping last trains happen because i think last trains here in london are usually you know 10 minutes before 12 a.m or something on it on on the weekday then you could you're able basically to go home we're going to give you an hour grace to go home in that regard that was the whole idea behind it and it was pretty sick idea all things considered because like i said usually going out in london if you stayed out after 12 before the night tube you're basically effed and you had to kind of you know um make sure you brought extra money with you for a cab or if worse comes to work you have to get on a bus and you know maybe get groped maybe get beaten up or maybe just witness you know some other forms of violence and you know misery on that bus because usually there's all sorts of people that get on those buses after night people doing night shift people doing shifty things so it's not the best place to go so um Anyway, that aside, that's when I kind of first kind of heard about it. But obviously knowing me and knowing that I'm a fan of electronic music and dance music, but mostly stuff on the underground side of things and mostly stuff that's not really the most commercially sounded. Because I don't think everything underground is great or I don't think everything commercial is crap. But sometimes the commercial stuff is just so commercial, it just doesn't even bother paying a ticket to go and watch it. So I kind of avoided print words for the most part in that regard. But there has been some occasions where some big DJs who I like have played it, which I've kind of regretted not going one show I regretted not going to, or maybe two, was a bicep show that looked incredible. It looked like they put a lot of work into the flipping set design and all the lighting and the screens behind them. And the other show also that I regret not going to was Skepta. He did a gig in Printworks randomly one night. Um, I think it was a random thing. It might have been for that album Konnichiwa. Not really too sure. But I remember seeing clips of it on Instagram at the time thinking, damn, and that would have been a great time to go to a place like that to experience it in a sort of different guise, not a nightclub, more of a gig. But anyway, I digress so this time around um we decided to get tickets for a dixon event dixon obviously you guys will know is one of my favorite djs and somebody that i've followed for many many years i think you know it's nearing near nearing on to two decades i've been following this guy um you know just somebody that i kind of look up to as a dj as somebody to look up to as an artist as a business person and just someone that kind of operates in this dance music space really effortlessly right doesn't he doesn't really strain himself too much doesn't try too hard kind of presents himself in a really great way and has somehow been able to cultivate his label in a vision um and everything he does in an extension in the same way too everyone kind of associated with in a vision is sort of kind of it's sort of cool someone you want to legitimately hang around with and i said many times on this podcast i think for the most part djs are dorks you know probably myself included and they're not people that i'd really want to hang out with or spend any extra time with you know maybe there's some hot female ones here and there but for the most part the rest of them you know they're just they're just dorks really just enjoy the music whatever but don't try and get to know them because you'll probably end up being very disappointed but I had, you know, we had had some interactions with Dixon and Arm back in the day. But for the most part, you just go to these things as fans and just kind of enjoy them. So this event was a trans Moderna event, which is essentially Dixon's sort of like all, all kind of immersive experience where he has these... Um, um, augmented reality type things going on really interesting things on the screens this time he had like a vr thing where you put a headset on and i, f I think he worked in conjunction with a particular graphic designer who built this really immersive world that you were kind of transposed in through these flipping um vr goggles which was sick it was the only you know the only downside about it is that we had to wait like a couple of you no know, maybe an hour and a half to get to get a try on them but once we did it it was definitely worth it especially if you're going to be in that event 
for like six plus hours it makes sense to kind of do those sort of things that they add on extra so that was pretty decent and for the most part because the queue wasn't moving that quickly every time people would jump in to kind of wait they'll sort of get disgruntled and then they'll leave so it kind of made it you know it kind of made it work in a way if that makes any sense so we finally got our headsets on and stuff and really experienced that for like only six minutes but it was really really good um especially for somebody that's a big fan of his so that was awesome but in general it was basically an opportunity for him to play all night and i've always been a fan of dixon's all night sets i think part of the law and part of the kind of appeal of dixon in the first place was that he was known um similar to like a solomon for playing these extended sets which is anything over six hours right where you're just playing for hours and hours and on end and usually in interviews Dixon will talk glowingly about these things he would say like you know these are some of my best sets ever where you kind of just go into a bit of a flow state where you're just kind of pumping out the tracks you're, you're going to really cool interesting directions you're taking your audience on a real real journey not people say the journey is a four hours no a real journey is plus six hours you're playing some interesting things you're throwing out some curveballs you're putting a few spanners in the works here and there it's just an interesting audio visual experience to kind of see you know in real time so i'm a big fan of those type of events so obviously printworks i thought would work really well for this sort of event because from what i've seen in the pictures it is quite an immersive place when you go into it um it kind of feels like it's sort of detached from the outside world you kind of get transported into another world when you're going in there but again it was my first time going to printworks i've never been before so it's near sorry Quay station um and then you, oh there's a candle water no i think it's candle water station sorry but it's in the surrey keys area so essentially um it takes a bit of a walk to get there it's kind of like a 10 minute walk i'd say but everything's sort of signposted to get you into the direction of tra of uh, print works and along the way too there's there's these kind of um wardens with their little high-vis vests on so you kind of know you're going the right way and then a the few sandwiches come up then as you get to the main gate that takes you into the flipping site they ask you for your ticket so already if you don't have a ticket they don't really let you in at that point so they kind of want to just see your ticket they see it you get let in and you continue walking into this main sort of uh you know area where print works is which is essentially on a massive site and you're kind of walking for a little bit and then you go into another door that then leads you into the main site and then you get checked again for the tickets and you have to get searched which isn't too shabby the shirt wasn't too aggressive even though you put everything on a tray you put your belongings on a tray they scan you with a metal detector they just pat you down and then you pick up your belongings and you carry on and then as you go through the main security bit you don't realize oh wow this place is massive there's on the left hand side there's a huge food court where you can basically buy you know different types of food like pizzas burgers um there's people selling like greek type food where it's just like you know um, what's that thing called gyros or gyros i forgot what it's called um where it's like a pitta and you put like uh, chips in it with like meats and stuff and you can even wrap it and eat it like that or you can just like you know eat it from the box so that was pretty sick to see and there's also a bar outside with a seating area and obviously everyone's smoking out there and whatnot and that was absolutely ram when we went there so i'm not sure if people go to print works just to jam because that's a quite a cool little space because it's a you don't really get those sort of spaces where you can be outdoors and smoking and dancing and listening to cool music coming through the speakers yeah i mean it's, so people maybe just sit there for the most part because they look really comfortable but then we went back inside again and then you have to kind of go up some stairs to head to the main room where there's a sign that basically say music that kind of leads you towards it and i have to be honest on my first entry into printworks it was kind of underwhelming sound wise i think you go through such a you go you go through such a journey kind of getting there right from the station all the way there it kind of rem it kind of made me oddly weirdly enough which i shouldn't because i should know better it kind of made me think of Berghain. When you get off the train station, wherever train station you get off, there's always a little walk you have to kind of go through, right? And then you're kind of, you know, you get up there, you're in the queue, you're on your best behavior, you're trying not to act drunk or so, but drunk or high. Um, and then you're hearing the music kind of bleeding through the walls of the club. You see the silhouettes of people dancing through the windows and whatnot. Then when you go in, you get searched, you walk up the stairs and you hit the main burger and dance floor and it's just... Whoosh, it's like a wave and it just hits your face and i was expecting i think the same thing i think my my uh, receptors in my body were basically tingled when i went through that journey because they all might have made me remember what i usually go for when i go to Berkeley. and then when i went into the main room and i was met with what i could describe as like active monitor speakers you know those types where you you buy when you want to do like a 
barbecue party outside in the garden somewhere you want to play some music and you have these active speakers you put in two at two corners of the flipping garden and have it kind of pointing towards the crowd and the further away you are the kind of less good it, the less nice it, hit, it sounds the further you are the kind of warmer it sounds and more kind of surrounded sounds and more basic sounds that's basically what i got from printworks the sound was absolutely caca really bad and considering the high level of dj that was playing there in dixon considering the amount of work they put into the set design and having these amazing led screens which i immediately thought at first watching them i thought they were screens as in like actual plasma screens but if you look closely it's just really small amounts of leds that obviously they kind of you know um uh get images pulled up on there or graphics and stuff and it kind of all kind of light up the bulbs differently or whatnot so it's pretty sick technology all together um and the work obviously those vjs and lighting people do there was a whole team of them sat there maybe i'd say maybe 10 people maybe more doing all that stuff and working it so clearly a lot of work went into it so to go into a place like that and see all that work and it the sound to be so shitty was that huh and then also the dance floor area is kind of weird because it's a print works, I guess. So it's on the main print work where the printing factory, I guess, would be. And it's sort of like this kind of gangway thing, this like really narrow kind of corridor, which you might have seen in the, the Batman movie, Robert Pattinson. That's the one where he goes in this nightclub and he's fighting all the guys. It was filmed in print works in London. So it's that kind of, but he was on the balcony, one of those kind of, but always on the main dance floor. So it's really thin, but then all the sides are open. So I guess maybe that's the reason why the sound isn't that great. It doesn't insulate well. Maybe they'd, they'd be better off having cart, cart, cartons. Curtains or something that they could kind of close to keep the sound in there or something like that. I don't know, something along with I don't know what it is, but the sound just bleeds through the entire place and it just sounds really tinny, really airy and it just didn't sound that great. But by the time we got to the front, and started really shocking out raving and stuff and maybe they improved the sound i don't know what happened maybe you, your ears got used to it it did sound a little bit better but it didn't sound the greatest i'm not gonna be honest so i think for like 35 pound you know for the tickets which uh, ho luckily i didn't pay for um because i was given one uh by a friend who, who didn't end up going but if i did have to pay for it, i would have been a little bit pissed it was nice to see Dixon play, obviously, for that set amount of time. It's great. Probably he's worth that money alone, his entry fee. But as a club experience, it's probably a bit of a wasted opportunity. Um, the sound was just not that great. And maybe because I was sober, I was kind of noticing it a little bit more than I would have noticed if I was drunk and high. But that was one thing that kind of left me a bit disappointed. And then at the end, when we did leave... Um, I guess because it was so full in there and I think it was a sold out event if I'm not mistaken they then made us leave through a completely different exit so it quite basically required us to do like a different lap around this the kind of you know site and go to go back to where the station is which then took a further long a longer time to get there because my feet were killing me and shit it was just annoying it was a bit of an annoying night I'm not going to lie towards the end I kind of wasn't I kind of couldn't wait to get home but then the next day I was kind of you know I was kind of chuffed that I kind of was able to go. I'm not going to lie. So I've got a clip here that kind of illustrates a little bit of what I saw inside. So I'm going to play it for you guys so you can kind of get a vibe of what the deal was when I was there. So as you can see from the lights on the video, if you're not watching the video, then I please, I do apologize, but check out the video on YouTube if you do get a chance to. The video and the light work in there is absolutely amazing. They do a really good job. Like you can tell there's a dedicated team that do it. It's not just some plug-in thing that's linked to the mixer and stuff that just plays off of what the tunes are playing. It's like people are actually going through it and, you know, doing the actual work, whatever it is. I don't know how they do this stuff, but it was actually like someone put a lot of effort into it. So that was pretty sick to see. Let me skip ahead and play another clip. As, as you can see it's really dark in there so it's completely blacked out you do like honestly feel like you're in some underground bunker by the time you do get out it's kind of like trippy your eyes kind of get readjusted to the light so it is pretty immersive but like i said the sound is just not as good as it probably should be for a mega club like that <laughs> skip again this is basically towards the front 
which was basically yeah, to the left of the stage, which was Dixon's right. This is where we basically stood for the most of the night. Probably the worst place to stand because we were standing right next to the wall, which basically was the main gangway that everyone was kind of walking down. Bit of a mistake that way. But what it was good for was that there's a little bit towards the clip here where you see the one of the screens, the LED screens. Earlier on that night, or maybe around the same time as, as I was filming this, some crazy dude decided to climb up one of the speakers um, that they have in print works. If you've been there before, you'll see them. It's sort of like a stack of speakers they have, but they're kind of encased in this sort of like barbed cage thing, which looks pretty cool, but obviously it's used to kind of hold them together so they don't fall on anybody. So this kid decided to climb up that cage thing, which is really high. It goes all the way up until one of the balconies. And he was on the top of that speaker with his top off doing handstands and stuff, like press, doing handstand press. I don't know if it was a CrossFit or something or just some really buff black dude who was into flipping um, calisthenics, but he was doing flipping been handstand push-ups he was doing that thing where you do a put where you do the handstand and you sort of like start moving your legs like you're on a bicycle some nutty stuff and at first we all thought oh he's part of the show because earlier on there was a woman on the that was doing a strip uh a pole dancing routine behind dixon right they got all the vips away from the back of the behind him and stuff and they put this pole up and the screen was you know had this great light on it i think it was yellow or something and she was just there like you know her silhouette dancing on the pole and doing these amazing things and kind of matching the beat of this music and it was sick really was amazing and then we thought that was the same thing because of that guy was on the thing we thought he was part of the show then obviously because the security guards were reacting really aggy and they were all running up there waiting to kind of pull him up and kind of you know put arms elbows and knees on him we thought okay he's not part of the show and then when he did finally because i thought at first he was intimating like he wanted to maybe move out of the way i thought he was going to jump down i was like, oh my god shit if he jumps down and he buckles he could end up flipping banging his head or breaking his leg i was thinking it's going to be horrible to watch but instead he jumped up onto the balcony. Then as soon as he went over the balcony, the security guards dragged him to the floor, were strangling him and stuff. Like, it was brutal. It was definitely one of those things that if you were high or drunk, it would have definitely been our vibe killer. But because I wasn't, I was just laughing the whole way through, talking to some other girls in there who were kind of a bit shocked at it as well and kind of trying to make them laugh too, not to take it too seriously. And it was just like a bit of a funny comedic moment there. But God damn it, man, Dixon has that effect on people. He makes them want to, you know, climb up flipping speakers and do handstand push-ups and stuff. I wonder if he saw it when he was on the decks. Did he see it that far? Because maybe it was too far away from him to see, but I wonder if he did end up seeing it. But it was absolutely gnarly to watch. I'm not going to lie. Let me play a little bit more of the clip. Yeah, and, and that's the LED things, right? So I thought at first these were screens, but they're not. They're actually just rectangles with little small LEDs that they, I guess, still can project images or whatever onto. It's pretty sick, man, that kind of technology. I'm assuming these things aren't cheap, but these are really cool. I'd love to have them in a home somewhere. Maybe not the best home furniture. I'm thinking about it like a dude, but it's definitely something that I would uh, love to see more in other, cl in other clubs for sure. <laughs> Oh, and the other thing that was really good, the sound was terrible. Like I said, let's not with the sound, but the production was awesome. They had this screen right here. So there's a screen behind Dixon where he's, where he's playing that can also like pivot. So the screen was like, um, I don't know, let's say it's red. So it pivoted like that and it went on top of him. So it kind of looked like, do you know the lights out? Is it Watergate? I think it might be Watergate. Let me see if I can get him up on here. I think it's a lights at Watergate. Let me see. There's a nightclub in Berlin. Is it Watergate, Berlin? Maybe it's Watergate. Let me see. But it kind of reminded me a little bit of Watergate, where they had those lights that are on top of you, that sort of like beam across. Yeah, I think it is Watergate. It is, it is, it is, it is. So they've got a screen. Sorry, they've got a screen behind um, behind the DJs, with the DJ booth, that can basically pivot and kind of you know scoot over the top of the dj so it's sort of like flat on top of you and they can basically just shine light on it so the whole time they had the thing the same color as all the other lights that were around so it was like a red or a yellow and it was just beaming the whole time it was so hypnotic to watch and it kind of did remind me of the watergate lights that they have as well right these lights where they're sort of like on top of the where it's sort of like running the whole way of the flipping club which is probably a better effect but still just see that in real life was super super amazing i'm not going to lie so that's definitely something that i think is maybe worth the money to check out and i think in general anyway printworks isn't corsica studios it's not fold it's not um peckham levels it's not you know color factory it's not you know club 9294 all these kind of like clubs that people go to on like a weekly basis it's probably a place that you should maybe 
you know have booked in for like a big event if you want to see like a big marquee dj that's probably a good reason to go there and if you do go there you will get a fully produced show like they'll put some effort into making it uh visually stimulating the only thing is obviously like i said the sound is just a bit of a letdown but i definitely think that was definitely something i would say was a good thing and then the other good thing i really enjoyed about it was the crowd because we've been to a lot um, a few of these maybe a, not a lot a few a few um, of these events um, with Innovisions and you know their kind of extended family and for the most part they're sort of only run by the same kind of people for the most part there are some exceptions here and there but they're run by the same sort of people and the same sort of crowd comes which makes complete sense but it usually isn't the greatest for me personally and I think unfortunately um, London wise or the UK our club nights are kind of dictated mostly by the crowd as great as it is to get good lineups and to have place club you know, parties and good you know clubs and spaces usually a lot of the fun of going to a nightclub is kind of predicated by the people that go in there and because we don't have a door picking kind of culture in the uk and basically if as long as you have money you can go into any sort of establishment it kind of means that nights out are really 50 50 you know you don't know if you're going to have a good night you kind of have, just have to go and hope for the best whereas places like berlin because obviously they take clubbing very seriously of course and they also they have that door picking culture it sort of lends to you having it being more likely you're going to have a good time than you're going to have a bad time regardless of who's putting on a night but this time I felt like because Transmoderna is maybe a more general, maybe because it's Dixon, maybe because Transmoderna, maybe because it's own show. It wasn't tied with the other group that do the innovation shows. It just felt a little bit more looser. The crowd was a way more varied. I saw different, way more different age groups of people than I would at the other events we went to. And the people were just safer way nicer we got, got speaking to a group of girls at the front that were really nice a couple of dudes that we bumped into from other other places that we saw one dude in particular was super excited to see us so that was pretty sick to see who kind of recognized us out of the blue um but yeah I, I definitely enjoyed the crowd there way better and i think even the bartenders were nice as well considering how big of a place it is and the amount of absolute spanners they have to deal with on a regular basis the print work flipping bartenders were absolutely brilliant very attentive very fast um very easy to kind of you know communicate with you know how much you need to communicate with somebody in a nightclub i know but you know just the general things that kind of can kind of affect your nights out and snap you out of the zone that you're in especially if you're high or drunk but yeah all in all had a good time um just annoying the journey back home but it was quite nice to get back home before 1 a.m i'm not gonna lie so that whole idea behind print works opening from like 12 p.m to 11 p.m is just genius yeah, it gives you time to get back on a regular train um you don't have to wait for a night bus and you get home at a decent hour like at 1 a.m ish you can maybe have a glass of water drink some tea and go to bed it was absolutely beautiful so i'm not going to complain about that in the slightest oh but the only other thing that's funny was the was the flipping kids outside selling flipping nitrous oxide or the laughing gas and stuff or the balloons you just go outside all year but yeah um, that was that was quite hilarious and especially considering it was a pretty residential area on the other side of where we were kind of let out you see there's loads of houses and flats around print work too so you can just imagine what that must be like for people that work there people that live there sorry day to day to kind of hear that nonsense going on all day long but i guess it's a good thing that it ends at 11 p.m you know, you know regular clubs stay open until four so maybe you have to kind of count your blessings in that regard and also you know you move there knowing full well what is about so you can't complain <laughs> 